In this video, we're going to be looking at question 21 of the Unit 1 sample assessment paper for the AS Chemistry from NXL. And question 21 is focusing on bonding, specifically for magnesium, as well as a little bit about calculations and the atom economy as well. So first of all, we're looking at magnesium being a metal in group 2 which is of course important, and it reacts with chlorine to form the salt magnesium chloride, or MgCl2. And we want to, for the first part, draw a dot and cross diagram for the magnesium chloride, showing the outer shells only. So we have to think about where we find these elements in the periodic table, and therefore what their electronic configuration is. So for magnesium, that would have an electronic configuration of 282, and the chloride would be 287. Now we can see from the formulas that we're going to have two chlorides, each of them getting one electron from the magnesium. So we're going to start with the magnesium and because it's the outer shell only, we're going to draw that outer shell completely empty. It is not wrong for you to draw the electron shell with eight electrons. Both of them are perfectly acceptable. But in this case, we're going to keep it nice and easy and we'll have it as completely empty. And we're going to draw our square brackets and put the charge outside. You can get away with putting the charge next to the magnesium in the center, but the best practice is to put the square brackets and the charge outside. Now we're gonna look at the chloride. So we know that we're going to have to have two chlorides. So we're gonna draw out the two circles and each of those chlorides, before we add any electrons, have seven electrons. So let's fill in the seven electrons in each of the chlorides making sure to show which ones are paired and which one is therefore unpaired. And now we have to show the electrons coming from the magnesium and they are a lot more strict at A level than they are at GCSE here. You have to use dots and crosses. You can't use all crosses or all dots. You have to be very specific about where they're coming from. So this one has to be a dot and a dot and both of them, of course, are going to have a charge of one minus. Now back in GCSE this might have been a three mark question as you can see at A level it is only a one marker. For part B we are looking at magnesium and the fact that it conducts electricity when it is in the solid state compared to magnesium chloride which conducts electricity when it is molten or dissolved in water but not as a solid state and we want to explain these observations. Well the first thing that we really need to look at here is what is the bonding in each. Properties are defined by the bonding that is present. So we know that for magnesium that is a metallic bond whereas magnesium chloride is ionic and that tells us about the particles that make up each of these. So if we start with the magnesium, the magnesium will conduct as a solid and we have to think about the structure and it is due to the delocalized electrons that are present. And those delocalized electrons that form that sea of electrons, they're delocalized, of course, that means that they are able to flow. So that can flow through the structure. So because it's metallic, it is our cations surrounded by our sea of delocalized electrons. And that will happen when it's in the solid state. That gets you the first mark. The other two marks both come from the magnesium chloride because if you notice, we have an, a comparison. We are saying that it will conduct when it's molten or dissolved, but not when it is solid. So we have to say why. Why does it conduct when it's molten? Why does it not conduct when it's solid? So for MgCl2, it conducts as molten or aqueous as, and it's very important that you get the correct particle, the ions are free to move. So in a metal, it is the delocalized electrons, whereas in an ionic compound, it is the ions. Whereas in a solid, the ions are fixed in the lattice. 
And when they are fixed in the lattice, it means that they cannot move, so they cannot carry the charge. So we are answering each of the three parts of the question. We're looking at the magnesium, first of all, and then why it can, the magnesium chloride conducts as molten or dissolved, and then why it does not conduct as a solid. And that gets you all three marks. Part C is now looking at a calculation. So we've got magnesium chloride being made by reacting magnesium oxide and dilute hydrochloric acid. And firstly, we want to write out an ionic equation. So the best thing to do for this is to actually write it out split up and then take away your spectator ions. So the most important thing is that anything that is aqueous can dissociate. And if it dissociates, it dissociates into ions and we have to think about our spectator ions and you learned about these back in GCSE. That just means that we anything that's identical on both sides we remove. So let's go through each of the terms. Well the magnesium oxide is a solid so we leave that exactly as it is. The HCl is aqueous so this dissociates and this dissociates down into two hydrogen ions and two chloride ions because it is HCl. Then this makes the magnesium chloride and because that is again aqueous, it breaks down. So we make an Mg2 plus ion plus our two CLs and water being a liquid, we don't touch and we leave it exactly as is. Now we can identify our spectator ions, which is of course our CLs. So we remove those and now our final answer is going to be the magnesium oxide plus two hydrogen ions will react to form magnesium ions plus water. And that is your ionic equation. And for part two, we want to look at the minimum volume of two moles per decimeter cubed hydrochloric acid needed to react completely with 2.45 grams of magnesium oxide. So this is a calculation from balanced equations. So we need to think about what triangles we're going to use and how we're going to lay this out. So I'm going to rewrite the equation just underneath for the purposes of this example. You don't, of course, need to do this in the exam. This is just so you can see where I'm getting each of the numbers from. And I'm going to list underneath it everything that I know. So I'm told that my concentration of the hydrochloric acid is two moles per decimeter cubed. And I know that my mass of magnesium oxide is 2.45 grams. And I want to calculate the volume here. So in this case, I'm going to have to use my NCV triangle, but I don't know my number of moles, but I can calculate them using the magnesium oxide. Because if I know the mass, I can also work out the MR. And the MR of magnesium oxide is 40.3. And you can calculate that using your periodic table. So now I can work out my number of moles, and that's using the triangle mass moles MR. So when I do calculations like this, I like to follow a three-step process. So I have my balanced equation. Step one is calculate the moles of the known substance. So that's the thing that we're told two out of the three things about. And in this case, it's the number of moles of the magnesium oxide. So my moles of MgO is going to be mass over MR. So that's 2.45 over 40.3. And that's going to give me an answer 0 0.06079 moles. Step two looks at the mole ratio between the two substances. So I'm looking at the magnesium oxide to the hydrochloric acid and they are in a one to two ratio. So that tells me that if I have 0 0.06079 moles of magnesium oxide, I need double that for the hydrochloric acid. So I can do two times that number of moles and that tells me that I have 0. 1216 moles of HCl. And then my third step is, of course, the calculation of my volume. So volume is the number of moles divided by the concentration. So 0 
0.1216 divided by 2, which is 0 0.06079. Now remember, that's going to be in decimeters cubed, and you can leave it as that, or you can calculate it in centimeters cubed. And down at the bottom here, they've used centimeters cubed. So I'm going to change this to 60.79 centimeters cubed. And that is your final answer to that calculation. Part D is looking at another calculation that is very much the same as the one that we just did. The only difference is instead of calculating a volume this time, we're looking at a mass. So we've got another method to make magnesium chloride by reacting magnesium carbonate with dilute hydrochloric acid. And we want to calculate the maximum mass of magnesium chloride that could be formed when 2.25 grams of magnesium carbonate is added and it's added to excess dilute hydrochloric acid. As soon as we see that word excess, I know I'm not going to use this in my calculation whatsoever. That is not the limiting reagent. This one is the excess. Therefore, the number of moles of the magnesium carbonate is the limiting reagent. In other words, it controls how much product I make. So I am interested in magnesium carbonate and I'm interested in magnesium chloride. So I'm going to do my same three steps. So my first step is to work out the moles of the known substance. And that's the magnesium carbonate because I'm told I have 2.25 grams of that. So my moles of MgCO3 is mass over MR. So I have 2.25 divided by the MR of magnesium carbonate, which you can work out as 84.3 using your periodic table. And that gives you 0.02669 moles. My second step is to look at my ratio. So this was the ratio between magnesium carbonate and magnesium chloride, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So however many number of moles of magnesium chloride I have, sorry, magnesium carbonate, that's the same as the magnesium chloride. So therefore, I have 0 0.2669 moles of MgCl2. And then my third step is to simply calculate the mass. And mass is the number of moles times the MR. So my 0 0.02669 multiplied by the MR of magnesium chloride, which you can calculate to be 95.3, and we get an answer of 2.54 grams. And that's your final answer. The last part of this question, question E, is looking to explain why the reaction to make magnesium chloride from magnesium oxide has a higher atom economy than the reaction using magnesium carbonate. Now, they're not asking you to do a calculation, they're just asking you to comment on it. So they're telling us that the first reaction is the one with the higher atom economy. So let's compare the two. If I go back up to my first reaction, I have magnesium oxide plus the hydrochloric acid giving me magnesium chloride and water. But when I use the magnesium carbonate, I get my salt plus water, but I also get carbon dioxide. That means I have more undesirable products with the second reaction. And remember, atom economy is looking for the mass of the desired product divided by the total mass of the products. So in the first reaction, we have got fewer waste products. Because we are only making the salt and the water. So only the water is a waste product. So we only form the H2O as a waste product. And this means that the molar mass of the products in the first equation is less. Therefore, it has a lower atom economy, sorry, a higher atom economy. So we have a lower number of our molar mass, therefore more of our molar mass is our desired products because we have fewer waste, so that gives us that higher atom economy that it tells us in the question. So that's how we answer all 12 marks of question 21. As I mentioned, this is a mixture of topic one, 
which is some calculations, and topic three, which is bonding and structure. Check out the rest of the playlist to see for the answer to question 22 onwards.